The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 13570 in the name of Keith Brown on University of Stirling, 10 years as Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Keith Brown to open the debate for around seven minutes, please, Mr Brown. Hey, thank you, President Officer, and thank you also to the members from all parties who have signed the motion which allows this debate to take place. Uh, some of those members are here this evening and may also be alumni, I know some uh, definitely are, of the University of Stirling, and I look forward to hearing their contributions. I'm also delighted to welcome representatives from the University to the Public Gallery this evening, and some of these uh, people are here. So, Cathy Gallagher, Director of Sport, David Bond, Head of Performance Sport, Caitlin Ormiston, Student Union Sport President, Ewan McGinn, High Performance Tennis Coach, Maya Lumsden, Tennis, Scott Duncan, Tennis, uh, Ross Murdoch, Swimming. And I should just say that uh, during the height of the Commonwealth Games and Ross Murdoch's particular success, I actually saw him at the um, Queen Street uh, Railway Station in Glasgow and was going to say hello, but I was too shy and he was, <laughs> he was surrounded by admirers at the time in any event. Um, it's great to have Ross here. And George Clough, also swimming, Callum Laurie swimming, Cameron Brodie swimming, Chris Purdy, performance sports coordinator, Matt Francis, public affairs manager, Steve Tigg, high performance swimming coach, Josh Williamson, also assistant swimming coach. Uh, now, many people think uh, that the University of Stirling lies within the constituency of Stirling, which is represented by my good friend, Bruce Crawford, who's been happy to indulge that illusion. Uh, he has spoken on many occasions in this chamber on behalf of the University of Stirling when it wasn't possible for me to do so as a minister, and I know he's a great friend to the university. But it does indeed fall within the boundaries of the fine constituency of Clipmanninshire and Dunblane, which I am privileged to represent, and I'm delighted to lead this debate highlighting the university's 10th anniversary as Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. That title was bestowed on the university by the former First Minister Alex Salmond in July 2008, celebrating the university as a centre of excellence, providing training and support for high-performance athletes. Alongside this prestigious title, the university was awarded £600,000 from the Scottish Funding Council to act as a hub of a national network of universities and colleges, providing training and support for Scotland's best athletes, known as the Winning Students Programme. I'd also like to pay tribute to the work of Professor Grant Jarvie, who I know bent my ear on many occasions about the um, bestowing of this title and this, this um, honour uh, for the university and also uh, that uh, uh, the work done by my colleague Fiona Hislop who then was the cabinet secretary for education and lifelong learning and they the work they jointly did together recognised and supported the University of Stirling as an institution that had sport very much at the heart of its identity actually long before it had that title it was also I think the first university to offer a degree in golf um, I remember Gordon Sherry was uh, an early um, student at the university for that so made it the ideal choice as Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. And over the past decade, Stirling sports stars, including household names such as Duncan Scott, who I had the uh, chance to meet recently at the university, Robbie Rennick and Ross Murdoch, who I've mentioned, have enjoyed medal success on the world stage at both the Olympics and Commonwealth Games. And today, Stirling remains at the forefront of supporting and inspiring talented athletes to fulfil their sporting and academic potential, offering sports scholarships across seven different sports, men's football, women's football, and which uh, we should acknowledge, of course, the fantastic achievement of the Scottish women's football team. If only the men could match up to that achievement. So uh, tennis, of course, tremendous achievements by uh, local um, people like uh, Jamie and uh, Andy Murray, uh, triathlon, golf, swimming and curling. And at a community level, Stirling is also host to the Central Athletic Club, one of the largest in central Scotland, itself home to Scottish champions, record holders and internationalists. Since 2008, Stirling has produced leading athletes across a wide range of sports, such as triathletes David McNamee, Grant Sheldon and Natalie Milne, badminton star Kirsty Gilmore and tennis ace uh, Johnny O'Mara. Scotland Hockey International, Alison Bell, Curling's Kyle Waddell, and Bochia star Scott McGowan, who competed for Team GB at the Paralympics. They also came through the Stirling programmes. I'd also like to mention some particularly notable highlights of the last 10 years. At the 2010 Commonwealth Games in Delhi, Stirling swimmers Andy Hunter, Jack Scott, and Lewis Smith won silver for Team Scotland in the 4x200m freestyle relay. 
At the 2014 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, Ross Murdoch won gold in the 200 metre breaststroke and bronze in the 100 metre event. Jack Scott and fellow Stirling scholar Cameron Brodie also won silver at the Games, finishing second in the 4x200 metre freestyle relay. Stirling scooped three silver medals at the 2016 Olympics in Rio, with Duncan Scott again and Robbie Rennick in the Great Britain team that finished second in the 4x200 metres freestyle relay. Duncan Scott was also part of the team that won silver in the 4x100 metre freestyle relay. In addition, a number of Scottish international women's footballers have also come through the ranks at Stirling, including former Manchester City and current West Ham United striker Jane Ross. Uh, the university women's football team currently play in Scottish women, the Scottish Women's Premier League. In rugby, Stirling students Megan Kennedy and Siobhan Cattigan made their senior Scotland debuts in February 2018 against Wales in the first round of the Women's Six Nations. In October 2017, the university's female golf team made history after triumphing in one of the highest ranked college tournaments in the US, securing top spot at the Yale Intercollegiate Invitational in Connecticut. The landmark was believed to be the first time that an international team has won a National Collegiate Athletic Association Division I tournament, which is the highest level of college competition in the US. And anybody who knows about the US system knows how high the level is in US colleges. This accolade came shortly after the men's and women's golf teams retained the European University Sports Association Golf Championships title in September 2017, having previously been crowned champions in Switzerland in 2015. And December 2017 also saw three Stirling students, Scott Duncan, Maya Lumsden and Johnny O'Mara, win the world event of university tennis when Team GB defeated the USA in the final of the BNP Paribas Master U in Lille. In 2018, university athletes saw the university enjoy its greatest success to date, returning from the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games with 11 medals. Now, the number of medals won by just the University of Stirling exceeds many of those won by entire countries at those games. An outstanding performance in particular from Duncan Scott saw the 21-year-old swimmer from Aloha, which is in my constituency in Clamanish and Dumblain, I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> uh, he took gold in the 100 metre freestyle, silver in the 200 metre individual medley, and four bronze medals in the 200 metre freestyle, the 200 metre butterfly, and the 4x100 and 4x200 metre freestyle relay events. Scott McLean and Craig McLean were also part of Team Scotland's 4x100 metre freestyle relay squad, while Ross Murdoch left Australia with a silver for his efforts in the 200 metre breaststroke. An English swimmer, Amy Wilmot, won gold in the 400 metre individual final, while Mark Austin, a former sports scholar, won bronze in the triathlon. Now, these are a huge list of achievements uh, and a lot to live up to, but I'd like to finish, if I can, by looking forward to the next 10 years, where I'm sure the university will continue to grow from strength to strength. I should also mention the huge impact that the university and its facilities has on the local community in both my constituency and in Bruce Crawford's constituency. Earlier this year, the Lawn Tennis Association announced that Stirling would be home to one of its two national academies, and Scottish Rugby revealed that the university, in partnership with Stirling County, would have a place in its new semi-professional uh, Super 6 League. In addition, the university continues to be home to the National Swimming Academy, while Sports Scotland, Commonwealth Games Scotland, Scottish Swimming, Triathlon Scotland, and the SFA's central area are all located on campus. The facilities are currently undergoing a £20 million redevelopment which will see iconic new complex, uh, an iconic new complex integrated with the existing world-class facilities. And that new building will include purpose-built studios, an innovative fitness suite, a three-court sports hall, an indoor cycling studio, a strength and conditioning area and a new state-of-the-art high-performance suite. And users of the building will also benefit from enhanced changing facilities and communal spaces. The enhanced sports facilities will not just support Scotland's elite athletes, but will also bring greater benefits to the wider community. Already 500 children each week attend the university's sports classes in tennis, swimming and golf, with a further 350 children attending holiday classes each year. And that gives aspiring young swimmers and tennis players a chance to train alongside performance athletes. And by capturing the interests of children at a young age, they'll work towards supporting the next generation of sporting talent while helping to foster a culture of healthy, active lifestyles among future generations of Scots. I look forward to the next 10 years of Scotland's Stirling University's, uh, the University for Sporting Excellence, and I'm sure it'll be even greater success than the last 10 years. Uh, can I say to those in the public gallery that whilst I'm sure every single speech will be worth applauding, I would ask you not to do so. Thank you very much. And uh, 
four minute speeches, please. And we'll go to Brian Whittle to be followed by Alex Rowley. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and uh, can I congratulate Keith Brown for securing some time in this chamber to uh, highlight the success that is uh, Stirling University and its Centre of Sporting Excellence. I thought I would spend uh, my four minutes just highlighting why uh, Stirling University is so important uh, in, in its, to Scottish sport and, 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 and across the board. Until the sort of advent, advent of, of uh, Stirling University and its, uh, its sort of sporting heritage, a lot of our talented uh, athletes were sucked away to the American collegiate system or perhaps uh, down south to somewhere like Loughborough or, or Brunei. Um, and the reason why it's so important that we have this facility in Scotland, uh, I think, is because it uh, allows uh, our Scottish talent to stay within its own community to, to be attached uh, uh, closely to perhaps uh, their own coaches uh, and their own, uh, their own training environment as well, um, where perhaps moving across to an American, an American university is daunting to say the least. And it's something that, uh, that, that uh, my middle daughter actually had a look at as well and subsequently uh, it didn't do. And the reason why, why uh, Stirling is, is different from the American collegiate system is when you go across to America, you're expected to represent that university week in, week out, which actually doesn't suit many sports uh, performance-wise when, when it, looks, looks, it looks at winning med medals at major championships. In athletics, for example, throughout the whole of the winter and, and right through into May, there is a competition every single week, university against university. So by the time it comes to the actual outdoor season, we find that a lot of our athletes are burned out uh, and therefore their, uh, their ability to win medals when it comes to major championships uh, is, is severely dented. So you have somewhere like, uh, like Stirling where the, the, the athletes can, can uh, go to and, and perform uh, their training. It fits in with their, their uh, academic uh, academic uh, sort of, uh, sort of uh, day as well. Um, the, the, the idea of, of having a hub where things like you know, strength and conditioning is available where they are, uh, rather than what, what, what many athletes, uh, uh, and I say athletes generically, have to do is seek out other avenues uh, to, to do the strength and conditioning work and, and, and work with that. Have to look for physiotherapy, have to look for medical support. And having that all on one campus in one area uh, and, and accessible. I cannot tell you how unbelievably important that is. And I think that taking the stress, that stress off of their, uh, their academic life as well, allowing them to, to uh, fit their training in, uh, as much, in a much easier way is hugely important. And, and Keith Brown, uh, quite rightly, s spent most of his speech telling us all the medals that have been won in that, uh, in that environment. And it's not an accident. It's not a happy accident. That has been designed specifically to allow our, uh, our elite sportsmen and women to deliver at the highest level. And as I said, the, 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 the academic flexibility uh, around, that, uh, around, around their, their sport is massively important. I think I said that, that membership to the university sports facilities, we also actually do support uh, it's help them to support them in developing a media profile, which is something that actually is, is a bit haphazard and has been haphazard over the piece. And many, many sportsmen and women have been caught out in that environment. So I think all of these things are massively important. So I, I, I just wanted to highlight that, that, that route into uh, international sport. The only thing I would say is what we have to be cognizant of is, is the step before that, how we ensure that that funnel uh, of talent that's coming into uh, to Stirling University comes from all aspects uh, of, of, uh, and all demographics. So I, again, just to, to reiterate what, what Keith Brown said, congratulations to Stirling University for its incredible uh, de delivery of, 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 of talent and here's to the next 10 years, presenting officer. Alex Rowley to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, I would also congratulate Keith Brown on securing this debate in Parliament tonight. 
I am delighted to speak in support of the motion raised here today on the University of Stirling, celebrating 10 years since its designation as Scotland's University of Sport and Excellence. I am pleased to recognise the success of the university, especially given it is also the university that one of my daughters went to, although not for sport, but for geography and teaching. The training and support given from the University of Stirling for high performance athletes is world class and it is right that we recognise and celebrate that fact. Over the last 10 years, athletes from Stirling have enjoyed great success on the world stage, including both at the Olympics and Commonwealth Games. Indeed, as the motion notes, Stirling students and former students contributed 11 medals to the last Commonwealth Game and three medals to the Olympics in Rio two years ago. As Mr Brown has highlighted, at the 2010 Commonwealth Games in Delhi, Stirling swimmers Andy Hunter, Jack Scott and Lewis Smith won silver for the Team Scotland in the 4 times 200 freestyle relay, with further success coming four years later in Glasgow with Ross Murdoch, who won gold in the 200 metres breaststroke and bronze in the 100 metres event. Jack Scott and fellow Stirling scholar Cameron Brodie also won silver at the 2014 Games, finishing second in the 4 times 200 metre freestyle relay. Stirling scooped three silver medals at the 2016 Olympics in Rio, with Duncan Scott and Robbie Rennick in the Great Britain team that finished second in the 4 times 200 metres freestyle relay. Duncan Scott was also part of the team that won the silver in the four times 100 metres freestyle. So there is no doubt that Scotland's University of Sport and Excellence is a great success when it comes to elite athletes. But as the motion recognises, there is also a wider benefit to the communities of Stirling and Clarkmanninshire. Indeed, I would say there is a wider benefit for all of Scotland. For the success of these athletes sends a strong message to all of Scotland's young people who have an interest in sport, and that is that they can succeed and achieve to their full potential. I was delighted this morning, presiding officer, to listen to a 12-year-old girl speak on the BBC phone-in about her delight at the Scotland's women's football team qualifying for the World Cup. She had been to Paisley to see them play and wanted to know how to get involved in the game through a local team. A great example of how the success of individuals and teams can have a strong influence on others getting involved in sport. And as a country, we do need all people to become more physically active, just as this morning the World Health Organization issued a report saying that we're getting less active. Yesterday, the Climate Change and Environment Committee heard from a group called Pass for All, a charity which champions everyday walking in Scotland, and they said physical activity has been estimated to, inactivity has been estimated to cost Scotland around £91 million annually. So the message tonight from this Parliament is well done to Stirling, to Stirling University and to all the athletes but it sends a strong signal and a strong message out to young people interested in sport across Scotland that you can achieve to your full potential and if you do, the support is there for you. Thank you. Kenneth Gibson, followed by Mark Ruskell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'd first like to congratulate my colleague, uh, Keith Brown, for bringing this debate to the Chamber today. And it's great to see so many representatives of Scotland's University of Sporting Excellence here in the gallery. As a Stirling University alumnus, I'm delighted to take part in this celebration of my old university, of which I have such good memories of sex, drugs and rock and roll. Well, there wasn't any drugs and there wasn't any sex, but there was an occasional amount of rock and roll and... Uh, there did seem to be quite a lot of running around. And in fact, it seems only uh, a few short weeks ago that I was actually running around campus and on cold nights through Bridge of Allen, uh, when possible, enjoying the spectacular Stirling scenery and all that its surroundings have to uh, offer. And there couldn't be a more perfect setting for Scotland's University of Sporting Excellence. <laughs> now, sport is dismissed by some as something we should not attach too much importance to, uh, something not worth investing in. But labelling sport as such is not only uh, simply daft, it is wrong. 
And in fact, Keith Brown has named so many uh, uh, illustrious athletes uh, that uh, it would be churlish to try and uh, uh, name them all once more. So I won't repeat uh, all the achievements of the countless swimmers, curlers and other international medalists who studied at the University for Sporting Excellence uh, because we've heard of so many of them and they've done Scotland uh, uh, themselves, their families and indeed the university uh, proud. But given last night's results, and I hope some of you will go along to France next year to personally support the Scottish women's team, given that there'll be few of us alive probably by the time the male team next qualifies, given the last 20 years of history. So I will mention again um, former Manchester City and current West Ham striker Jane Ross, because she is a great role model, especially considering that girls are still less likely to engage in physical activity than boys, a trend which sadly uh, continues into adulthood. Now, watching athletes succeed can be inspiring, and when you can identify with the person or team in question, it can give a young person confidence. They might think, if he or she can do it, maybe I can too. And nothing is better than active participation. The Chief Medical Officer recommends 75 minutes a week of high intensity or 150 minutes a week of lower intensity exercise for adults and 60 minutes a day for children. And such exercise comes with a plethora of benefits. Regular physical activity has been proven to reduce the chance of type 2 diabetes by 40% and colon and breast cancer by 20%. Also helps manage stress, maintain or regain a healthy weight and more. Not just top sport, regular exercise, whether it's walking your dog or going for a bike ride, it all counts. The facilities that we developed at Stirling University will not just benefit students or people in Stirling and the Bridge of Allen. Neighbouring communities in Clackmannanshire, across central Scotland and beyond too will be able to enjoy them. Needless to say, Stirling Centre for Sport and Excellence is not the only special venue we have in Scotland. My own Cunningham North constituency also prides itself in having two national centres, one in Cumbria and one in Large, where sporting talent can be accommodated. Last year, the newly refurbished £12 million Sports Scotland National Centre in Verclyde opened in Largs, helped with £6 million of money from the Scottish Government. This unique facility is the first in Europe where disabled athletes can both stay and train at world-class, fully integrated multi-sports facilities. It is open to high-performance athletes, sports clubs, school and education groups, governing bodies and the local community. As part of its ongoing efforts to produce a healthier nation and prioritise development of sport within Scotland, the Scottish Government increased Sports Scotland's core funding by 2 million from 29.7 to 31.7 million, a 6.7% increase. And in June, Scotland's Physical Activity Delivery Plan was published, presenting a wide set of concrete actions across multiple sectors to encourage physical activity and reduce inactivity. The strategy takes a holistic approach by encouraging working across transport, education, health and other sectors in line with the Global Action Plan on Physical Activity 2018-30, recently published by the World Health Organisation. This strategy sets out four objectives and recommends 20 policy actions applicable to all countries addressing the cultural, environmental and individual determinants of inactivity aimed at increasing the regular exercise and sport participation of the people of Scotland. And Scotland was hailed by Professor Fiona Bull, President of the International Society for Physical Activity and Health, as a forerunner in addressing these objectives. And the £20 million investment in the University of Stirling is a strong commitment to Scotland's sporting future. Presiding officer, I want to congratulate and thank all those who have been involved and benefited from Stirling University as Scotland's Centre for Sport and Excellence over this past decade and wish them every success in the future. It is important we encourage children and adults across Scotland to keep active and fit by performing exercise in any way they can. And yes, if you're exceptionally talented, you may end up in Stirling. Even if you can't run like a deer or serve like Andy Murray, you'll absolutely reap the benefits from regular exercise. Mark Ruskell, followed by Bruce Crawford. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I join members in thanking Keith Brown for bringing forward this motion for debate? Good to see you finally free of the shackles of ministerial constraint. Um, and can I offer the warmest congratulations to Stirling University students and, and staff on an incredible decade of success. You've given me a constant, a perpetual lump in my throat as I've watched major Commonwealth, European, Olympic, World Championships and hearing the university mention time and time again as the medal tallies for Stirling students have grown and often overtaken those of entire nations. Now those successes show the peak of personal and team achievement at the elite level, but it's clear that what sits underneath these triumphs is a strong foundation of research and personal development across the university community. And that success has been felt right across the campus. I was really heartened in 2014 
to hear of film and media students finding career-changing broadcasting internships during the Commonwealth Games. Sterling's lead on sport has really benefited the whole community and the whole of the campus. Now, Sterling's always had a great reputation for sport. Keith has uh, reminded us that it introduced the first sports scholarships back in 1981. And it's always been a, a really important part of that wider student experience on campus. And I recently took the uh, Swedish finance minister, uh, indeed, on a visit back to Sterling, where he studied uh, alongside myself in the 1990s. And he talked passionately to students about not how politics was, uh, was his main love, but how the basketball team was such a big part of his time at Sterling. Sport was such an important part of the student experience. And of course, today, sport is more important than, uh, than ever as part of that wider student experience. And I'm sure it's one of the reasons why the university will enter the top 10, the top 20, rather, uh, in the UK of universities in the next few years. But the launch of Stirling as Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence in 2008 it took the facilities, the research, the tailored study programs, and the headquartering of sports bodies and the success onto a whole new level. The National Tennis Centre has been an important part of that success story, and the funds to develop a multi-million pound coaching program at the centre will embed that success further for years to come. But what I do find perplexing is that one year ago, the nearby Park of Keir development was in principle granted by ministers on the basis that it was the National Tennis Centre. It isn't. The real one is a couple of miles down the road, and the university has confirmed they have no links with Park of Keir. Now, clearly, creating a, a Murray tennis legacy is important nationally and for the Stirling and Dunblane area. But I see the National Tennis Centre at the university as a central part of that Murray legacy, as is the £50 million investment in grassroots facilities around Scotland that will feed the champions of tomorrow into it. A partnership should be built around the Stirling area, founded on well-thought-through and sustainable facilities to build on the university's success. And it was disappointing that Stirling-wide bid to secure the £30 million National Performance Centre lost out to Edinburgh and Harriet Watt in 2013. But I think that Stirling now is in a far stronger position to develop fresh partnerships and bid again when the next opportunity arises. And I do hope that through the Stirling and Clackmannanshire City deal that stronger links can be developed for the Stirling area and indeed the National Park as a major venue for sporting events and a centre of excellence that can inspire and draw in locals and visitors alike. So, presiding officer, congratulations to Stirling University, its students and staff, and here's to future decades of partnerships, excellence, success and inspiration. We have Bruce Crawford to be followed by Oliver Mundell, and that will be the last two speakers in the open debate. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. I, I, like others, I'd like to thank and congratulate my colleague and good friend, Keith Brown, for bringing this important debate to the Chamber. Uh, the University is a very important institution that links my constituency of Stirling with Keith Brown's constituency of Clapmanninshire and Dunblane. But Keith can be assured that I'll continue to try and bask in the success of the University, despite the fact that it lies in his constituency. And that's going to be done with even more vigour in future, President Officer, because somebody obviously gave him a copy of my speech before we got here this evening um, to deliver. So that will be seriously um, delivered in future as far as the university is concerned. But it's inevitable that we're going to cover some of the, the same ground because it's worth repeating, because some of what's being achieved at Stirling is truly phenomenal. Now, many students reside in the Stirling city during term time and they make a huge contribution to the local economy and our communities. Uh, and this important debate particularly will give us, be able to tell us about the experience of, uh, for Stirling University at the Commonwealth Games and the huge sporting success that Stirling University students achieved on the Gold Coast of Australia. Now, first, since first opening its doors to students now almost, I think, 51 years ago, even younger than me, the University of Stirling has grown immensely to the institution we know it today, famed for its contribution to health and sport. And Stirling University's achievement in sport in relation to its size, I think, is unrivaled across the globe. It offers a number of world-class health, science and sporting courses, inspiring more people into taking a career in professional sport. And perhaps most notable of all is obviously 
the recent success of the university's swimming team. At two, uh, this 2016 Rio Olympics, the University of Stirling was Scotland's best performer. The Team GB swim team took home three silver medals, and of course, Stirling University swimmers Duncan Scott and Robbie Rennick were part of the squad that sealed the Olympic silver in the four times 200 freestyle relay. The squad achieved its best result in 108 years, setting a new record for the GB team, and Duncan Scott went on to smash the UK record for a 100 metre relay. The successes in Rio in 2016 were carried into the Gold Coast last year. The Commonwealth Games are a hugely successful event for the university's sporting team. Indeed, the Herald reported that it, had it been an independent nation, it would have been fifth on the medals board for these particular games. Again, local swimmers such as Duncan Scott, now a local and national hero, uh, Robbie Rennick, Ross Murdoch and Amy Wilmot won big for the university. Actually, there are so many fantastic athletes and so many, it's a pity we can't name them all. You did a damn good job of trying to do it, Keith. Um, but, but for those who have not been able to mention, forgive me. But all of these athletes deserve personal credit due to their phenomenal performances. But so too does the University of Stirling for providing the base that nurtured these incredible athletes. And sport is clearly part of the ethos of the university itself. The university sets out clearly its unwavering focus on providing the time, space and support to develop the best possible sporting performers. In the past decades, Stirling has nurtured many star athletes, whether it's triathletes, badminton or tennis stars, international hockey players, as well as curling and Paralympic sports people. As well as we can now celebrate, of course, Scotland's national women's football team in qualifying for the World Cup. And I'd like to make special mention that the contribution the university made to women's football. A number of the international women's footballers passed through the ranks at the university and I personally want to thank them deeply as at last I might again get to a World Cup. I was at the last time Scotland played in France where obviously the women are going to play this summer and was in St Etienne to see the Scottish men's team getting gubbed by Morocco so it wasn't a good experience so I'm looking forward to the women making a much better contribution on behalf of the, the national football teams. In closing, the University of Stirling's contribution to Scottish sport is the pride of our nation. Well done who all to all have been involved, staff, students and alumni. And the best of luck to all of those who are still to pass through the doors of the university in the coming years. We will continue cheering you on. Thank you. Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. It's a pleasure to speak in tonight's debate, which at least up until now has been very interesting with a number um, of informed uh, contributions from across the chamber. Uh, like colleagues, I'd like to start by congratulating Keith Brown um, on, the, on securing this debate. It's uh, very apt uh, because he appears to have done so at near Olympic speed, uh, having uh, changed roles and uh, been given the opportunity to do things like this um, again. Um, for my part, I'm not uh, some great sports person, uh, and sport certainly didn't uh, feature in my university experience, and I'm not even going to go into Kenny Gibson's list uh, and, and speculate on, on anything else. Uh, but uh, I do, um, like many people across our nation, recognise just how important sport is and how key it is to our national uh, identity. And hearing Bruce Crawford say just there, uh, that uh, Sterling would not just have outperformed many small uh, countries, but actually outperform uh, many medium and large sized mm -hmm. countries in its own right is a uh, testament to, to just how great a job um, is done there. Um, and it's super to, to hear the list of all uh, the individuals, like many others, I've enjoyed uh, watching and sharing in their successes, sometimes uh, at uh, things like the Commonwealth Games and sometimes um, at home uh, on television when. Uh, you can uh, actually get a little bit more uh, animated and uh, more uh, fixated uh, on uh, proceedings. Uh, but uh, I think it is important, as others have said, to remember that behind all those individuals is an excellent team um, and community at the university. And that is what makes it so special, attracting not just elite sports people, uh, but uh, their coaches, staff, um, and other research and associated uh, excellence 
uh, that goes with it. And it's very, very important because it really has put Scotland on the global map. Um, often universities are measured solely uh, on their research or uh, on academic achievements of which Stirling has many um, and also many successful initiatives to, to commercialise research done at the university. Uh, but there can be absolutely no doubt uh, that uh, the tremendous success of uh, in the individuals uh, and teams that, that have come out of the university, including those in the gallery, uh, has put our whole country uh, on the map. Um, and that's the one area where I think uh, the motion does a slight disservice uh, to Stirling because I think uh, its uh, benefits are, are truly national uh, for the whole uh, of Scotland. And we can all be very, very proud of having Stirling uh, here. Um, I was very interested in the points uh, made by uh, Brian Whittle as well about the uh, unique uh, benefits uh, that Stirling offers in terms of keeping talented Scottish young people here. Um, that was not a point that I'd previously uh, considered. Um, and it, again, it's another uh, attribute we've got to think uh, very carefully about and certainly representing uh, the part of Scotland that I do, I'm very keen to pick up on some of the points uh, that he then went on to raise around ensuring that young people here uh, have the opportunity to benefit from those facilities. Uh, so I'd just like to say thank you again to Keith Brown uh, for bringing forward this debate um, and uh, congratulations to everyone uh, who's been involved in making Stirling University one of the crown jewels of our Scottish uh, education system. Uh, and uh, for its tremendous record as Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. Thank you. I now call Joe Fitzpatrick to respond to the debate for around seven minutes. Please, Minister. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to Keith Brown for leading this debate and for contributions from across the Chamber. Also, add my welcome to the representatives in the gallery, and I'm sure um, we'll cross paths uh, many times in the, the months to come. Um, I'd also take this opportunity to congratulate University of Stirling for reaching a decade as Scotland's University for sport, Sporting Excellence. This is um, my first speech as Minister for Sport, um, so I'll start by taking this opportunity to formally congratulate the women's football team on that fantastic performance in, um, in qualifying for next year's World Cup, and we all look forward to um, backing them all, all the way to, to France. Um, one of the, the things that folk ask when there's a new sports minister is, what's your, what's your pedigree and it's, it's, what's your sporting pedigree? And it's difficult following Brian Whittle, who has such an obvious uh, sporting pedigree. I'm surprised that he didn't bring his many, many medals, um, which he'd promised to do before, but I think he must have forgotten them today. Um, but um, today's debate is a good opportunity for, for me to put on record my, my sporting past. And, because I can remember um, as a, a young member of the, um, the Scottish Midlands swim team uh, spending many summer um, holidays at Stirling University um, in intensive training um, and using the facilities there for um, uh, weeks on end and that was a, a year after year facility. So many, many happy memories. I don't know if it was a similar time as, as um, Mr Gibson was, was studying there. I'm not certain what the, what the age difference <laughs> is. Um, but um, the creation of Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence would not have happened without the vision and advocacy of professor, provided by Professor Grant Jarvie, now at the University of Edinburgh, who's currently leading the review of Scotland's sporting landscape. His view, which came to fruition, meant that Scotland had an accessible um, international centre for sporting excellence to compete with the significant public investment that's been uh, delivered through the universities of Loughborough and Bath. During the past 10 years, the University of Stirling has managed the sports scholarship programme winning students and um, it's a great example of national partners and academic institutions in our sport, sporting system working together to provide funding and academic flexibility to gifted student athletes across Scotland. The university has been able to bring together specialists in research and this shared knowledge has allowed athletes and coaches alike to develop and succeed. In 2012, indeed, 
Dean Lockhart. Well, first of all, let me welcome the Minister to his new position. Uh, there are more, as he probably knows, there are more international students at Stirling University than ever before. I wonder if he agrees with me that part of the attraction uh, for international students will be the world-class sporting facilities available at the university? Joe Fitzpatrick. I, th I think the member is, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, correct, um, and, and that works two ways. And, um, all um, students at Stirling University will benefit from the international students who also attend there. In 2012, the university opened their Sports Science and Sport Medicine Centre, another great milestone, partially funded by the Scottish Government. The assessment laboratory, biomedical centre and sports medicine facilities have benefited the students at the university, but also the performance athletes based at the Sports Scotland's Institute of Sport, which is also located on the university campus. The facility is also open to our sporting governing bodies and um, clubs, as well as the physiotherapy services is open to the local community. The drive and expertise at the university, along with its top class facilities, which have benefited from national lottery investment through Sports Scotland, has helped to facilitate, as we heard earlier, um, the National Tennis Centre and, and the National Swimming Academy is also based at the university. In addition, it provides um, a home for Commonwealth Games Scotland, Triathlon Scotland and Scottish Football Association Central Area. Sports Scotland's Institute um, of Sport um, and the university enjoy a very close uh, relationship which enables them to create high performance environments to benefit um, our athletes who perform on the world stage. And Scotland has certainly seen and felt the benefits um, with the highest medal total in an away Commonwealth Games in the recent Gold Coast. And, and we um, have also seen great success of Scottish athlete, athletes perform as part of Team GB at the recent European Championships. I hadn't heard the statistic that Bruce Crawford said, but that would be quite incredible if, if that was accurate. Brian Whittle. Okay, I thank, thank you for giving way. I just wonder if you'd agree with me that uh, one of the, the, the main attributes of Stirling University is the fact that success breeds success. And in that winning medals, it then therefore sucks and drags more people uh, to want to as aspire to that level and want to aspire to that university. Joe Fitzpatrick. That the sporting success that we've had um, from, from athletes across Scotland and including the, the women's football team qualifying to the World Cup will inspire um, people across Scotland um, to, to get involved in sport, um, whether it's at the very earliest grassroots stages or at the, the highest levels. I think that, that is, is really, really an important thing. And the number of people that I spoke to during the, um, the, the European Championships who were inspired, particularly volunteers who had been watching sports that they'd never seen before and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a shot. And that's, that's, that's a really good thing because as Kenny Gibson said, um, physical activity is one of the most important things we can do to improve our health, mental as well as physical. So really, really important. Um, and to carry on the, 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 the success of those uh, elite athletes that have come out of Stirling, Andy and Jamie Murray, of course, their success. Um, the area has a proud tradition in the, the world of tennis, and I was delighted to hear that the University of Stirling was named as one of the two um, UK national academies for tennis. Um, this academy will provide a new seamless pathway from grassroots tennis into the world of elite players. Um, so that, that opens in September 2019 and the Academy, Academy will allow our young players to be able to um, experience a holistic environment by being able to stay and train along with um, and access to the best coaching, science, medical and welfare. Tennis Scotland are doing a fantastic um, job at grassroots level and they now have a clear pathway to take uh, youngsters through their um, forward to the championships um, and hopefully we'll see many more players um, being nurtured to play at the highest uh, levels um, which Andy and Jamie have had and are currently experiencing. Of course, the university is much more than just simply dealing with elite af athletes. It's committed to providing sporting and physical activity opportunities for all of their students. And there's a strong support for this by um, Scottish Student Sport, who provide opportunities for all students to participate in sports alongside their students. This focus chimes with our Active Scotland Outcomes Framework and wider Scottish Government commitments to getting people more physically active and therefore enjoying longer, healthier lives. A lot of the points um, which Kenneth Gibson uh, covered earlier. Um, so can I again congratulate uh, the University of Stirling in reaching 10 years at Scotland's University of Sporting Excellence and wish them all the very best of success for the future. Thank you.
That concludes the debate, and this meeting is closed. And those in the gallery may now clap.